Good morning, church. I'm Gary Nerd, Groves Pastor. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Advent. Thank you. Sometimes and still today, uh, there's great anticipation as we approach the holiday, especially if we have little ones in our lives. But will it all be wishful thinking or will we truly be changed and bring genuine change to life? It's not just preparation and planning, but doing it. Let's take this time to prepare ourselves for worship. from the gospel writer Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ the way. May the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Please join in singing verse 2 of O come, O come, Emmanuel. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the either's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good 
which is taken from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. For whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
wish lists are all the rage this time of year. Hoping to capitalize on our seasonal desires, advertisements abound for online and big box retailers. The former merchant, Sears Roebuck and Company, entitled their annual holiday mail order catalog, the Christmas Wish Book. You remember its arrival? Nearly two inches thick, too big to fit in the mail slot, page after page of magnificent toys and other wonderful gifts. It was a treat in itself. Now, if you didn't have that dream catalog, you could still convey your wishes in a letter to Santa Claus. Many of us did that, too. If you're a certain age, you recall Johnny Carson's annual reading of children's letters to Santa? Now, some were the predictable petitions for toys and other goodies that Johnny masterfully turned into a comedy sketch and got a lot of laughs. But other letters, despite a child's tender age, were thoughtful, unselfish appeals to heal a sick custodial grandparent, procure a warm winter coat for a younger sibling, secure a job for an unemployed single parent. The eternally boyish Mr. Carson and his often skewed sidekick, Ed McMahon, were known to shed a tear or two awed by such selfless wisdom from the neediest children, mid the familiar holiday TV characters of Charlie Brown and the Grinch and Mr. Panda Rudolph, Mr. Carson's reading became a touching Christmas tradition for late night viewers. Such feel good exercises are not confined to Christmas time though. We've all played that fantasy game of the genie in a lamp granting three wishes. Children want toys and favorite foods and straight A's on report cards. Thoughtful adults want world peace, an end to hunger, a cure for cancer and other dreaded diseases. There's even a collection of genie in a lamp websites nowadays with wishes ranging from the ridiculous to the sublime, as you can imagine. Well, Isaiah's prophecy in our first lesson really sounds a bit like our wish list, doesn't it? Receiving wisdom, care for the poor, wickedness obliterating, the wolf living with the lamb, an end to hurt and destruction, and all of these blessings being led by an innocent little child. It all sounds too good to be true. Now, if you're a cold-hearted, cynical type, or if you're one who believes that the Bible and its characters are pure myth and fiction, then I guess ancient Judah's heartfelt longings do belong in the realm of fantasies for emotionally weak people. I'll give you that one. The Bible, though, unlike the holy books of other great world uh, religions, the Bible is not just classic literature and moral guidance and temporal encouragement, but genuine history. Now, although some stories sound admittedly unbelievable, archaeology continues to demonstrate the reality of these 66 books written over the course of thousands of years. Can't argue with the physical evidence that's now before us. It was just buried for centuries, but it's there. Which is to say that our scriptures report the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. Warts and all are revealed for anyone to know and to learn from. I mean, what other holy book is so candid in its truth telling? Because when love is at the heart of it all, and 
The Bible is an expression of God's love for us. When love is at the heart of it all, honesty is the only way to go. I mean, there's nothing here to hide. Love doesn't deceive. Love trusts and love is faithful. Or as the Apostle St. Paul wrote to us a little earlier, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. Reading and studying the Scriptures is an exercise in hope. That's why last week I suggested that we read one chapter a day about Jesus. I mean, if we're hopeless... It's a statement that we're not engaging Holy Scripture. Scripture, what a simple, easy way to remedy so much of our malaise most days. Now, Isaiah prophesies a peaceful realm that is not real at the time he talks about it and writes about it, but it will be. And we can imagine such a world, but for it to become real, we have to work for it and work toward it. It's not mere wish fulfillment here. It's not, well, Isaiah said it, so uh, God's going to just make it all happen. Uh-uh. We have our role to play. Now, so does God, and God fulfills the divine part by providing a deliverer from worldly evil, an anointed one known as the Messiah in the Hebrew language, known as the Christ in the Greek language. Indeed, as one commentator wrote, Jesus is the only true and completely righteous person the world has seen, wholly obedient and acceptable in God's sight. In his inward thoughts and outward actions, and in what he suffered on the cross, Jesus completely fulfilled God's will. His righteous death alone is the ground on which we are pardoned and accepted by God. He has paid the penalty for our sins. For John Wesley, though, things didn't end there for us. Christ's righteousness was not imputed to humanity in a way that magically made us all perfect. Don't we know that? Instead, his supreme goodness was imparted to us through the Holy Spirit in a way that inspires, but does not force us to change. That gives us the ability to choose to change for the better, we call that repentance, and then live into that unique Jesus kind of holiness, we call that sanctification. So what I'm saying is that Christ puts us on the new right path, but we need to take the steps and walk that path by following Jesus on that path and imitating what he models on that path. We can't get there on by ourselves, nor by our own proud devices. We need him provide and show us the way. So we are invited, we are called to a holy kingdom life in which Christ leads the way now and forever. And that forever started with Christ's resurrection and begins for each of us when we admit our failure, receive his forgiveness, for those failures, and then make him our life's leader so we don't keep making those same failures. In other words, we die to the old life and rise to the new one that God avails and the Holy Spirit makes possible in Christ Jesus. We receive the gift of salvation and new life once, consciously and conscientiously bringing it to life every day. You see, God's kingdom is not located in a specific place. Oh, it's over there, you know, on, on the other side of that hill. No, no, no. 
God's kingdom is not located in a specific place. God's kingdom is also not located in a specific time. Oh, I know when that time is going to be. It's no, no, no. God's kingdom is not located in a specific place or in a specific time. The kingdom and our participation in it is a quality of life. It is a life. It is a new life that God gives us through Christ. Don't go looking for the place. Don't go looking for the time. Bring it to life in your life. We choose to live such a life with Christ. Or not. In Frank Capra's Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey was dejected and discouraged because all the good that he and his family had done was about to be overtaken by the evil and greedy Mr. Potter. Who wouldn't be depressed? Suicidal, George jumped off a bridge into the roiling icy waters below. But he was saved, and he lived to recall all of the things he had done to make so many lives better. Those little kindnesses, which George humbly discounted, added up, compiling and compounding in ways that snowballed into blessings, even life-changing world events. A wayward friend found true love. A brother saved an entire troop ship from sinking during World War II. A family moved from the, slum, from the slums into their own home, all thanks to George Bailey. One person can make a profound difference. But let's be clear, Henry Potter and his ilk don't just go away, but they also don't remain in power forever. In the midst of such malicious doings, George simply took the gifts that God gave him, took the life that God gave him, took the new life that God gave him, and shared them all. He made a genuine difference that positively affected the people around him, people who also chose to accept that goodness and act on it. As they were blessed, they blessed others. The cycle of grateful, unselfish giving continued. So you see, my friends, it, it's more than Hollywood. It's more than ancient prophecy. It's more than wishful thinking. It's possible. And it happens because it's real. As we heard in the lighting of the second candle of Advent, Christ is the way. With Christ, we can too. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In response to God's word, will you please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he seated at the right hand of the Father will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Peace of Christ be with you, also with you. Peace. Shake Christ, peace. God, let us give until it helps the poor and needy. Let us love until it changes the abused and doubtful. And let us serve until it blesses the least and the oppressed through our tithes, time, talent, and testimony. And the oppressed, doubtful. And let us serve until it blesses the least and the oppressed through our tithes, time, talent, and testimony. Who taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um,